along. My name is Louisa Higgins. I am the Arts Administrator for Riverside County Office of Education. And I called this particular uh, webinar Art Standards Made Simple. Not that they're simple, but this is meant to be an overview. And if you have taken a look at the standards and started to use them or not yet, because they seem somewhat intimidating because they're wildly different in a, in a sense than the ones we had before, this is an opportunity to go over each of the components. I know I had been working um, with the previous standards for almost 15 years, so uh, it was kind of extraordinary when the new ones came along, but now that I've been sitting with them a while and, and gotten familiar with them, I really appreciate the way they're written and the way they uh, lend, themselves, lend themselves to the teaching that we're doing today. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I just wanted to remind you, it might be helpful to take notes, whether or not you have the two uh, forms or not, just because there's some things that you'll want to call back as we're doing the worksheet. So if you just brought, brought down a few notes, and I kind of tend to highlight things in red that are um, things I really want you to see and pay attention to. So that's just a little recommendation. I'll turn this music down. So our art standards are based on the National Core Art Standards that were developed. And before California, or before the National Standards were established, we didn't have something that was really cohesive across the whole country. And so California adapt, adapted them um, with very minor modifications from what was happening nationally. So that's a good thing for us to have that standardization. And they were adopted in January of 2019. So we've had them a little while now, coming on two years. And the framework is the next thing that we'll be exploring in another workshop. And they were written by a cross-section of people. So um, arts organizations and teachers and students all were involved in this process to make it extra meaningful. And in case um, you're not an arts teacher, because I know we have a variety of people here this afternoon, there are five art forms. Uh, so there's visual art, which is my background, and then there's vocal and instrumental music, dance, theater, and media arts, which is not a new art form, but it's new as far as being recognized as an art stand. So it's the fifth one, and that encompasses things like podcasts and photography and digital art, uh, and film, so that's very exciting. So the first element I wanna look at that are part of the standards, this comes at the beginning, if you had all of the standards together, element one, is phil philosophical foundations and lifelong goals. And you'll see as we go along, there's a couple of pairings like that. So they pair these together, philosophical foundations and lifelong goals, and this is what's our why. Why are we doing the work we're doing? Why are these standards the way they are? And so this is the first piece that I want you to take a look at, philosophical foundations. So there's six of them, and it's the different ways um, that arts, that we use the arts and they affect our lives. So communication is one, creative personal realization, culture, history, and connections, well-being, community engagement, and then the arts as profession. And I'm sure all of you, just right off the top, can think of ways that these philosophical foundations affect your practice. But what I want you to do this afternoon is read them. That's one of our handouts. And choose the one that most resonates with you. And then reflect and write down three reasons why this particular foundation speaks to you. So we're looking at the foundations. And then select one way that a philosophical foundation can lead to a lifelong goal. So one is right at the very beginning, what's the underpinnings? And then where are we going with this down the line for our students that we turns it into a lifelong goal? So I'm just gonna set the timer for two minutes and please take that time to go ahead and write that on the worksheet. So which foundation re resonates with you? Why? And then how do you see it as a lifelong goal? And if you get done before the rest of us, if you wanna go ahead and put that in the chat, uh, that would be ideal.
That's a little two minute chunk of time that I carved out for this. And I put the slide back up that had them, uh, all six of them. And uh, someone in the chat said, that's hard because I relate to all of them. And I agree. I just wanted you to have a chance to really think about that. What's your why as an arts educator? And I know I always end up gravitating towards arts as well being especially in this time that we're all experiencing together because, you know, if I were to give my three reasons, it feels good to make art, it relieves stress, I can express emotions. And then in terms of lifelong goals, I think of, of my own kids, you know, what, you know, that are graduated from college and up and working and my daughter that's in law school paints now just because that is a, a part of well-being for her. So I think it's important to think about what's our why and also where we're going. What are the lifelong goals that we aspire to for our students? So thank you for taking a few minutes to take a look at that. And so moving on, we'll look at other parts of the standards because there's quite a few. And I think that's why um, it was a bit overwhelming to me when I first saw them. Uh, gee, what do all these things mean? So we're gonna look at each one of them and, and kind of get a firmer understanding of all those moving parts. So we have artistic process, we'll tackle that first and then anchor standards. I think we're all pretty familiar with the word standards. And then there's another pairing that they have, the enduring understandings and essential questions. We'll break those down. We'll talk about artistic process component, and then finally the performance standards. And I'll try and look at the chat as I go along. I see some great stuff in there. Okay. So moving into element two, and this is really the heart and soul of these standards is the four artistic processes. And so they are the cognitive and also physical actions in which art learning and arts making are taking place. And so each of these disciplines incorporates, each of the arts disciplines, I should say the five, art, music, dance, theater, and media art, incorporate these processes. So these are really the most basic and most key thing for us to know and get comfortable with as practitioners. So the first one is creating, it's most easily understood. And so it's the conceiving and developing new ideas and work. And so in red, and this is where I might take a note, is it's artists getting ready to create the art. Okay, so they're, they're in that creation stage. So that's the first artistic process and that's understandable and that's something that we've had. And then you move into something else that's really understandable. I call it the three Ps, perform, present, produce. And that depends on the art form. So you're performing if you're in dance or music or theater. You're presenting if you're putting up your visual arts, like in a gallery, you're showing your artwork. And you're producing in media arts. So you're producing a film, producing a podcast, and so forth. So I put in red and just simple language, artists doing or making their art. So I think those are pretty understandable, the creation process and then also also moving into actually doing it. So what is new and different is the responding piece. And I really love this, you know, once I started to wrap my head around it, but it's how you understand it and evaluate the meaning of the art that's taking place. And I, I know in the more developed programs I've worked with over time, it's really digging into what's happening, not just a drive by experience where you see a play or you walk by art and you don't talk about it and, and analyze it and get into it. So in red, in simple language, I have the audience reacting to the art, you know? And so this is a group of students, obviously in a museum, taking it in. And then finally connecting. And I love this one too, because this is about personal meaning and external context. And so in red, I've written artist audience connecting the art to their own experience. So it's really, really where you personalize it. And I think that's really important because that makes art different for every receiver. It's, you know, the artist can have a certain intent, but then what the audience get could be something completely different. So those are the four, and we're gonna explore those for just a minute. So let me go back over these slides real quick. So you have creating, 
which is conceiving and developing new ideas. Moving into the three Ps, perform, present, or produce, as the case may be. And then we have responding. So, you know, what's your reaction? How are you feeling about the art? How are you uh, responding to it and taking it in? And then finally, connecting. So on your worksheet or on a piece of paper, if you could write down, what are the four processes? I believe I have them on the sheet. And then a brief summary, a working summary for it. And then an example of each, if you can, from your own classroom, if you're a practicing arts teacher. You know, what's an example of creating one of the Ps, responding or connecting? So we'll give about two minutes for that. I'm loving what I'm seeing in the chat. I'll go back to that, but please share there too, or instead of, because that's really helpful to everybody that's here today. So let me set the timer real quick. Okay, two minutes. I'll go back over the slides one more time if you're working without a sheet. Okay, creating. Artists getting ready to create art. Responding. Okay. Think about this in your own classroom. Where are these happening for you? About 30 seconds. Seeing some great comments in chat. <laughs> I like that comment, Kevin. It's really about creating a safe space and making it okay to do your thing. Great comments by Ed. Wonderful. So I'm sure all of us can think of some real strengths we have in at least one of those areas and are currently doing right now. So if you get, if you can, can really wrap your head around those, you've got the backbone. Those four artistic processes are incredibly important to what's happening. And then we move into fleshing it out a bit. So we're used to the word standards, and so we have anchor standards um, in the within the artistic processes. And so these are the behaviors, skills, and habits that teachers are expecting from students. And the interesting thing about these is that they are pal parallel across arts disciplines. So you will find um, the creative um, processes and the anchor standards across the five disciplines and grade levels. And this, because they're par parallel and they work in all the art forms, this creates artistic literacy. And I think this is really one of the big takeaways of what we're after with the new standards is that knowledge and understanding that students have to be able to participate in the arts authentically. And when you go back to lifelong goals, that the arts are always a part of their life. They might not be pre-professional, but they are always going to enjoy, appreciate, know the vocabulary, know what's happening. And so artistic literacy, I think, is an important concept to understand. <clears throat> so as far as anchor standards, we have create. And remember, create is artists getting ready to create art. And I highlighted some key words in there because you'll see some similarities <clears throat> as we go through. So in the first anchor standards, generate and conceptualize. And then you move into organize and develop. And number three, ref refine and complete. And you'll see some similarities as we move into the three Ps, artists doing making their art. <clears throat> so they're 
in the beginning, analyzing, selecting, and then that word develop comes in again, develop and refine, and then convey. So that's four through six. And remember, these are parallel across disciplines. Then you get into responding. This is a little bit different. You have perceive, you have interpret, and you have apply criteria. And then the last one, connecting, is kind of standalone in the sense that number 10 is personal experiences, and 11 is using societal, cultural, and historical context. And again, those are things that are much more paid attention to in the new standards than, than ever before. So going back to our sheet, let's take a few minutes to explore those. So anchor standard one, like I said, it moves parallel. And let's just play with that a little bit. How do you enable students in your classroom to generalize, conceptualize artistic ideas and work? And I already saw that a couple of times um, in the chat. And hence, that's very UDL, that you are enabling students to do that work. Like what are the choices you give them? How do you allow them flexibility? And then a little work around Anchor Stand Standard 11. Give one example of how, as you as a teacher, can incorporate cultural or historical context into your practice. I'm sure lots of you are doing that already. And that's culturally responsive teaching, CRT. So I wanted to throw in some of the lenses that we use in education. So if you would quickly jot down an example of each where you see that happening in your practice. So we have two minutes for that. Okay, there's some great examples in the chat uh, shared by Anthony and Michael and Jill and Ed. So great work, everybody. I don't want to read them out, um, but hopefully you're paying attention to the chat as we're going along because we have some great uh, points of view. Uh, good job on referencing those standards in your own classroom. Okay. So element four that we're looking at today is another pairing, and I, that just happens a lot, actually happens twice in, this, in the standards. We have enduring understandings and essential questions, and that's another um, pair of things that go together. And so enduring understandings are statements and important ideas and quote processes. I try to highlight things that I want you to remember. And they synthesize what students should come to understand and know. And they also make connections with other disciplines. I'll flip back and forth here, but they go together with essential questions. So these guide students in their inquiry about the enduring understanding. So um, they, like I said, one, and let me move on to this other slide because it makes it a little easier. Sorry, I lost my arrow for a second. So EU, enduring understandings, is what we think. And then EQ 
is what we still wonder about. And these are actually, and I'll show you an example when we get closer to the end, they're actually on the page with the standards. So they're always there for you to reference. And an example for theater would be the EU is a statement. Theater artists work to discover different ways of communicating meaning. And then the question that goes with that is how, when, and why do theater artist choices change? And of course, that can be very similarly stated for dance. And you can, you know, dig into that. Students can dig into that. And of course, you know, anyone who's a performing artist could say a lot about why do our choices change, when, why, and how. So that's an example from theater. And then on your worksheet, I have five EUs and EQs. So if you take a couple of minutes to read through them, please analyze each and decide if they're an enduring understanding or an essential question and write EU or EQ aside, just to get familiar with those. Okay, one minute. Okay, and I put the EU and EQ back up just for a bit of a prompt. And here is the answer key. <clears throat> and of course, if you know, um, if you're looking for a question mark at the end or a period at the end, that would that would um, help you. Uh, Anthony says, I have a friend on Twitter who always says, what do you see? What do you think? What do you wonder? I never realized she got that from the standards. Well, there you go. So there's the answer key. Hope you all had that with no problem. I miss one? Well, anyway. <laughs> okay, element five is the artistic process components. And these are also on the standards sheet that I'll show you at the end. And, and somebody is saying science also uses, I notice, I wonder. Yes, exactly. Um, so these are the main actions, and they're expressed as verbs, such as imagine, plan, and make, evaluate, refine, present. And so these are incorporated into the standards, and they really Tell us what we're going to be doing. So some of the process verbs, again, using theater, you have process verbs under creating, performing, responding, and connecting. So those are our action words, the things we're going to do. And you can see some of these words have popped up as we've been going along, like develop, select, interpret, uh, empathize. We haven't talked about yet, but those are the different types of words that we're working with in the art standards. Oops. And then the sixth element is performance standards. And so these are the standards that articulate the student achievement and translate into the standards, into goals. And so these are set up in pre-K through eight, grade by grade. And then when you get into the high school level, they're measured proficient, accomplished, and advanced. 
So this is what proficient accomplished in advance looks like at the high school level. So proficient, a level of, atta of achievement attainable by most students, and then accomplished moves into students who are completing a rigorous sequence of high school level courses. And then of course advanced is something that's indisputably rigorous and uh, prepares students for college level work in that art form. Music is kind of a whole, um, it could be a whole other webinar because it has the pre-K through eight um, distinct strands, but then it also allows for ensembles, harmonizing instruments, composition and theory, and technology. So that can be a class of its very own. So um, it's very much more broad and more detailed. And I, I think that there's a service um, to music that, that NOVA was there uh, before. So that's, like I said, that's a whole other webinar, so I'm not going to go any further into that this afternoon. Uh, I also wanted to point out the standards coding system, because you'll see it when I bring up a page of the standards. And it, it looks a lot like science. It reminds me of chemistry back in the day. And so if you first see this nomenclature, if you will, it might seem a little strange uh, at first glance. But if you look at this, you can see that the, the initial number is the grade level, and then the artistic process. I'm, excuse me, then the discipline, then the artistic process, and then the anchor standard. And in most cases, there's an A, B, sometimes even C, and so forth. So it's a new look. And then when you get into high school, instead of uh, the grade level, it has accomplished to begin, then the discipline, then the artistic process, and then the anchor standards. So on your sheet, I have uh, some nomenclatures there for you to decode. And I put up the abbreviations for visual arts, media arts, music, theater, and dance so that you have those. So let's take, again, two minutes and try and write those out. And then as soon as we're done, I'll give you the answer key. Okay, and I was reading through the chat as we were doing this, and um, Greg had some interesting information about See, Think, Wonder from Project Zero, and I was thinking about this inquiry-driven learning, uh, reminds me of visual thinking strategies, and also the Lincoln Center model uh, that the McCallum Theater uses, so that is, that is very different. Um, Oh gosh, I saw a couple of things in the chat about Hamilton too, and how that has really formed such a connection for students um, because of the style of it, the poetry, the connecting to personal meaning for students. So thank you for the comments that you're making. So here is the answer key for what we did. So take a quick look, see how you get the coding. Yeah, third grade, kindergarten, fifth grade, first grade. 
So putting it all together, I pulled a page from um, the standards, and this is the um, standards that I took from the CD webpage and reformatted. But you look at every page has all of the elements that we talked about this afternoon. So this is a dance page, but it has the um, performing is the, um, oh my gosh, I'm like drawing a blank. It's under performing, anchor standard four, and then the enduring understanding is there. The essential question is there. The process component has the verb express. And then you see the nomenclature up at the top going across the columns. And then when I said like you have an A or a B, the substandards there are the subparts of it. So these are all of the elements that we talked about today, all in one place, except for the philosophical foundations and lifelong goals, which come at the very front. One of the interesting things to know too is that when these standards were put together, there was an incredible emphasis on cultural relevancy and that um, what we were doing would be diverse and affirming and inclusive. So that is very much uh, the intent of these standards and um, included all parts of the writing. And these standards were also designed uh, to use UDL and to really be about the process of learning, not just simply the attainment of outcomes, so that we have flexibility and that we you meet students where they are in the art making process and the arts learning and move them forward. I also want to share with you that there's a great app for the standards that's available and I have this on my phone and I love it because the arts is first because it's alphabetical. But if you want to reference the standards and, and take a quick look, this really makes it easier. It's a great tool to have. You can also download the standards if you visit the RCOE VAPA page. We have all of them there by um, arts discipline and you can download them. And the way we formatted it, as you see at the bottom of the page, there's note taking section. So you can print this out and three hole punch it, put it in a binder and have it there. And you can always um, refer to it, make notes and so forth and really get to know them well. Um, at the end, we have a survey here at the end. I'm actually gonna have Jessica send it to you in a link um, by email after we're completed today. And that's our wrap up. That's our very quick um, overview. And of course I have plenty of time to stay on and answer questions. And I'm always available for, um, by email. I'm actually more on top of my email than I ever have been. I don't know if everyone else is too. But yes, if you'd like to stay or you'd like to um, put something in the chat or you have a question, you can unmute yourself. And that's it. That's our simple overview of the art standards. So thank you for being with us this afternoon.